As you guys know, we live in Changu, Bali, and I've been living there for four years, but every now and then I do ask myself, is the grass greener on the other side? So, for the next week, we'll be right here in Uluwatu, seeing if it compares to living in Changu. So they say the best things in life are free, and this is really no exception. This spot is actually not anyone's land. It's just open. It's a special, special spot. For a shot. <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that before? Probably not, right? How crazy is that? Like, feet, cliff, that's so cool. Yo, Ryan, how many likes is this gonna get on Instagram? A lot. Let me tell you something. Over the last few months, everybody has been moving down here to the cliff country of Uluwatu in droves. So many of my friends are sick and tired of the traffic of Changu and the tourism that's very quickly coming back. And honestly, it has me feeling like I'm missing out. I want to see what is Uluwatu really all about? What is it like to live here? How does it stack up against Changu? And is this somewhere I could consider moving? Because honestly, I'm getting a little bit of FOMO. Good morning guys. It is our first day of living here in Uluwatu. We've woken up here to this beautiful, quaint and so cozy little villa. Could have booked a hotel, but we wanted to really become locals for this moment in time. The best way to do that is to actually be with locals. We've got Omar and Chloe and they have so kindly invited us into their home. I just posted on Instagram stories and they were crazy enough to say yes. Omar's from Italy, Chloe's from France. Why do you guys live in Uluwatu? Mostly serve for me. Yeah, I think it's also like a place like quiet. Tourism first started in Bali mostly because of surf. Starting in Kuta, people made their way down to Uluwatu and to this day Uluwatu is still a surf haven. It's got a surf culture that you can feel in almost every place that you go. So we're gonna have to try that out. It's been over a year since we've gone surfing so let's see how it goes. In Changu, a big part of our daily ritual is going to the gym. What makes us feel calm and in control of our lives. A lot of friends had told me that there's very few restaurants, bars and even worse is the gym seen down here but having checked Google Maps it's not that bad we're gonna go try out one that's just around the corner it feels so good to be back in the gym normally when I travel I make excuses I fall out of routine not gonna let that happen this gym overall it's not bad it's a little tight the equipment's not all the best but one month at the gym I go to in Changu will cost you the same amount as one year here so you get what you pay for we're gonna go eat some food we're gonna nourish our bodies We've been told that to get a really delicious brunch, we gotta come here to Chella. Ruby and I are splitting this. It's a meal for two. And on the platter is halloumi cheese, lots of eggs, hummus, peppers, avocado, and it's with literally some dates wrapped in bacon. And shakshuka and waffles. Mm. You need to come get this if you ever are in Uluwatu. It was like $14 total for that. That's pretty wild. I literally cannot walk. I'm so sore and so full. There's a few downsides to living in Uluwatu, and one of them is this. Most people that live in Uluwatu are not even connected to the local water line. That's because there isn't really one. And so hotels and villas are having to truck in their water. If you're a tourist here and you're just visiting, it makes no difference for you. Your water is going to run. But if you're an owner, it's an additional expense and it's a big what if. What if there was ever a water crisis? On that note, don't waste your water and make it count. Everyone coming to Uluwatu is definitely going to have to make some time to go and explore the beaches. And this is a first for me. We're heading down this trail here. And I've been told it's about 10 minutes of stairs. So come prepared, you're gonna sweat. Oh my gosh, guys, this view is insane. We are so high up. It's a bit of a journey to get down, but can you imagine the journey to get back? How do you feel that we did leg day today? Mistake indeed. This is my first time ever here, guys. I don't know why I've never spent much time down in Uluwatu, but already I'm seeing. I need to be down here more often. We have made it to Nungalan Beach. Why can't Changu look like this? Look at this beautiful white sand. Hello, Ketut. Come back. I come in peace. Everybody thinks that this is Bali, the Bali that you see on the entire 360 of the island, but sadly, the amount of blue water on this island is actually very little. This is one of the areas Ulu just has Chengu beat. That feels good. We're cutting things a little tight, but we actually want to go surfing today. We're going to pack up our bag and go back up that mountain. Welcome to the gates. 
to the surf. This is the place to come if you're a beginner surfer in Uluwatu, where the waves can get pretty overwhelming. So to get down is about 15,000 per person. You have to go through the cliff. There's cracks and crevices, and that's where they built the staircase. Such an unexpected break into paradise. So stunning. Renting a surfboard is about 50,000, which is like three and a half dollars, and uh, there's no time limit on it, really. But the challenge is gonna be, we don't really know how to surf that well. So we're going out there where there's a crowd of people all fighting for the same wave. Odds are not in our favor today. How are you feeling, Ruby? Um, like I haven't done this in over a year. Well, scared. Okay. Okay. All right, so and tonight's a very special night. It's all you can eat. I want some food right now. I'm hangry. Oh my God. We got put onto this tonight because of these guys. They're like, do you like pizza? I was like, I like pizza. They're like, do you want to eat all you can eat? And I was like, yes. So tonight for $6 at La Baraca, we're going to eat this. I'm getting what I deserve. There's something about coming to a class. There's no excuses. I was sore this morning from yesterday's workout. Doesn't matter. You give it everything. I'm wearing a coat of sweat. Charlie, you kicked my butt. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good job today. So right now we're just in Ungasan, and breakfast is really affordable here. This is like four dollars. A smoothie bowl was like three and a half, and the food, coffee, all really good. It's called Terabell. I want to tell you guys about this. This is a Logel bag, and it's actually shaping up to become my weekend trip bag. It's a great size where you can fit all of your main camera gear. It's even got this really awesome snapping mechanism, magnetized. You can pop out a strap. You've now got yourself a second convenient bag. I love this rugged canvas, but it's also got some finer leather detailings, which along with the canvas is actually going to age really nicely. Overall, this Logel bag is super high quality, lots of pockets. You're definitely going to see me using this bag more often. And if you guys want to get one for yourself check that link down below in the description and let's get back to the video so before coming to Uluwatu I thought that all of this lower southern part was Uluwatu turns out there's actually a lot of different regions first thing you need to know is that the southern tip area is called the Bukit that includes Uluwatu that includes Bingen Ungasan and right now we're in Ungasan the most centrally located part it's actually very developed there's a lot of markets there's a lot of different restaurants and honestly you're gonna save a lot of money by being here I mean like a two-bedroom place like this it's gonna run you about hundred dollars a night whereas in Uluwatu could could easily be $200. If you guys are looking for a really cozy property that's not too expensive, then you can just DM Chloe. She might be able to help you out. The next place you definitely want to add to your list is this, Palmia Beach Club. This place is so stunning, guys. You want a day bed here at Palmia. It's about $75 for the day bed. It includes spend credit towards food and drink. And honestly, things are not badly priced. Time for a massage. So I asked Chloe for a good local spot to get a massage and six dollars for an hour massage, full body. It's a good price. It's not the weekend today, so it's gone up to seven dollars. Yeah, we're doing it anyways. Okay, well, he's gonna have a shoulder and a foot massage. I'm gonna have a full body massage. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be on that level in just a moment. Absolutely amazing. You can get a lot. It's six dollars on this island. She was like going deep into my feet at points. I was like, Ugh! That's oh, fine. That's I fine. I experienced the same actually with the foot massage, but the whole body massage, really great. <laughs> was worth every dollar, but it wasn't great, but that's okay. So we got on our bikes and came to the far east, and there she is. A seriously beautiful start to the day, and one of the things that I'm noticing about Uluwatu is that you've kind of got that small town feel where I'm just like hitting the bed by 9 p.m. every night, which means I'm waking up much closer to sunrise. As someone who's starting to consider himself an old man, it's a nice feeling. So I'm a few days in now, and I'm ready to start making some comparisons between Changu and Uluwatu. Now, if you guys saw my last video about Changu, you know already that this is kind of like the hub of Bali. It is where where all of the action happens for expats. Lots of people are there building their businesses, hustling to build a better future. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are also just kicking back and partying. But ultimately, if you are a digital nomad looking to embedder yourself, you're 
probably going to be spending some time in Changu. However, if you come down to Uluwatu, you might have a harder time finding that. I'm not gonna say there aren't people down here working on their businesses, but there's definitely much more of a surfer mentality. People are chasing the waves, the sun rises, and there's also quite a large conscious community, which is a term that kind of means people that are into more spiritual practices, yoga, tantra, all that stuff can be found here. Now there's another community called Ubud, and that's a whole other story where a conscious community is maybe what dominates it, and we'll probably be making a video about living in Ubud. But I also love being around the most beautiful beaches, having the most incredible cliffside sunset views, and you just can't get that in Chenggu. So, I guess the question still remains, could I move to Uluwatu? I still have a little bit more time here, so I'll get back to you on that. Oh, no. You've been initiated into Bali. That's a part of the scooter from the shark attack. It's a reminder to wear a helmet, people. All right, after an unexpected start to the day, this right here is one of the most famous spots to get food. It's also like a surf shop inside there. They've got some of the most beautiful surfboards at a serious price tag. Beautiful. I want the surfboard, can we get it? <laughs> one of my friends told me he drives all the way from Changu down here just to get their breakfast burrito. So you can already guess what I'm ordering. Hey, <laughs> spirits are high. Road rash won't stop us. Not today. And here we go, the breakfast burrito. I'm gonna give it one bite to make the judgment. No, it's on my pants. It's really good. <laughs> I'm into it. Uluwatu is very, very laid back. But there are some people that still come here to do work. And one of the things that Changu definitely has Uluwatu beat on is co-work spaces but that's gonna soon change here there's a lot of construction going on in Uluwatu we're seeing restaurants bars and co-work spaces open up you're looking for a way to stay productive and connected then coffee shops and restaurants but I can't speak for the internet speed if you need fast upload sometimes coffee shops just won't cut it so we've just arrived here to a new spot that I've actually never even heard of. It's called Balangan Beach. It's on the same side as Padang Padang was, but a little bit further up north. Guys, I'm not joking when I say I have not come to Uluwatu beyond a couple parties, a couple day trips. To see this, it just keeps wowing me. I honestly underestimated how nice the beaches were and how many there were. It's really incredible. Might be a little early because I haven't seen it all, but this is my favorite beach so far here in Bali. The sand is really nice. There's not a whole lot of rocks or coral here. The only downside is the waves are really strong. When they pull you out, you start to realize there's nothing you can do. So you kind of have to ride with it. But if you're a nervous swimmer, yeah, it'd be a little uncomfortable and dangerous. Oh. Wow, the waves get huge here. Okay, I won't tell anyone about this one. Yeah, so we're here in uh, Kuta. Kuta is so beautiful, guys. Come check it out. We almost missed this spot. We were about to leave and I was like, oh wait, there was a cliffside. Just that little drive up here brought us to this viewpoint. It's surreal. When something is so good, you just don't have to change it. We have come back here to end the trip on the highest note possible. But the question remains, could I live in Uluwatu? And the answer is actually not what I thought it would be. I think that while it's developing, it's still a little bit on the quiet end for me. I like Chenggu. I like the energy. I'm a go-go kind of guy. And here is a sleepy town. It makes for a great getaway from Chenggu. And maybe that's always what it will serve as a purpose for. When I first arrived here, people told me, look, there's no gyms. There's no restaurants, but if it's not here yet, everything you could want in terms of businesses are coming. I mean, I see just down the road, they're opening a CrossFit center here in Bingen. They're opening a co-work space right next door. In five years, this place might not be that different from Changu, and it has the beach. I kind of feel I could live here. I don't know. Could you? Uh, yeah, I personally love this slow kind of living, so I would move here in a heartbeat. If I could have another home on the island right now, here in Uluwatu would probably be my next best choice. I'm not about to pack my bags and leave Changu, but this place is developing and I am getting a bit of FOMO. And one thing I want to let you guys in on is that I'm about to start a villa development series. Number one on the list outside of building in Changu is potentially here in Bingen. But I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video on buying land in Bali. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And let's get lost again in the next one.